Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys. How British... Uh, hi, how are you? My name's Connor, if you're new. Um, that rhymed. It's a British police video, okay? I'm curious to see uh, the differences in American and... Um, yeah, how British police deal with nonviolent criminals. Let's go. I'm in frame. Tonight on Crime oh, Fighters, you, the dark you, side you, of the city. You told me to stop fucking I told you to stop swearing. You've continued. Yeah, right. I'm now arresting no, you under Section 5 of the Public yeah, Order Act. Do you understand? Yeah. Don't swear at me again. You're under arrest for Section 5 Public Order, mate. Take the smile off your face, it's not funny. Water. In 2002, Sheffield was among the worst 10 UK cities for street crime. Since then, street robbery has been cut by 70% and now it's one of the safest cities to live. Part of this success is down to a team of police officers who patrol nighttime hotspots, building closer bonds with the street community. How much do you have to steal then to get, to, to get your money's worth? Sheffield Community Safety Officers Jim Mumby and Mark Wortley are on night patrol in the city centre. They're looking for a known drug addict they think is responsible for two recent street robberies. We're looking for one male in particular, he's a white male, uh, about 5 foot 10. He's responsible for two uh, robberies that uh, occurred at the weekend. The descriptions are of the uh, same male. Uh, it's occurred in the Shalesmore area uh, where people that have been walking through have actually been robbed of their possessions. Uh, we just come in a general area search and uh, to obviously uh, have a look for the male. They head to this outdoor soup kitchen to look for him. Queuing up to uh, get something to eat at the soup kitchen. Uh, it's a voluntary service where people come and provide either a hot cup of tea or a meal in some way so they can obviously get some kind of nourishment. It's here for about 20 to 25 minutes, Monday to Saturday. They don't do it Sunday, so obviously it's a long day for them. Because uh, what tends to happen on speaking to them is they'll, they'll last eat Saturday night and the next time they may would possibly be the Monday night. When did you last eat, Jamie? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, yeah. this morning. Thing, well, yeah. Was that the Archer Project that normally yeah, feeds you as well? Yeah, this morning to Archer Project, yeah. No problem. Sausage and, and tomatoes, is it all right? Yeah, all OK. Right. Yeah. What drugs are you on at the moment, Jamie? Uh, heroin and crack. How much a day is that costing yeah. you? Roughly, nah. It used to cost me oh, up to 100 quid a day. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I've got myself down to about £20. How did you used to get your money then to pay for that, Jamie? Well, I used to like shoplifting odd commercial burglary, weren't it? So That's right, yeah. You're begging it all to get any of your money, Jamie? No, I ain't got patience to do that sort of thing. No, it takes a long time, doesn't it? Yeah. Thanks for your time, Jim. I'll let you eat your right. soup before it goes okay. cold. I'll come and Thanks see you in a bit. Thank you. I don't want to say this about every American cop, but every time I watch a, a, a police video of other countries, it just... I, I'm not saying... I don't want to say this about every American cop, okay? I know there are... I don't want to say all of them, but I always get this feeling where, like... You, you're as a policeman. You're you're more of like someone whose job it is to check in on people and see how they're doing, and even if they're doing something that is on the books could be illegal, and you gotta bring them in to just kind of think about what's best for him, know the commu community more, and yeah, in some cases arrest people for other things that are harmful to others or whatever. But I, I just get that feeling that it's like he didn't look he lo he looked at him in like a fellow citizen, not just yeah. I don't want to say this about I don't want to generalize, but it's just something I've noticed, and it's just I think it's more how it should be. Thank you. 
You're currently staying at a flat, aren't you, near London Road? Mm-hmm. How do you know that? Because I'm, uh, I'm a police officer, I'm into know everything, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're just on alcohol, though, aren't you, at the moment? I'm an alcoholic, yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to recover. Right, no um, problem. How much are you drinking a day? As much as I can get. Right, and what kind of drink? Um, mainly white shite, you know, what? White, uh, right. white lightning. Yeah. And stuff like that. If it wasn't for your friend then giving you the flat, where would you be? Probably be on end of a rope. Right. Obviously that's not good. Because I, you... I am a suicide risk. Right. And have you slept on the streets much? Cut you uh, two or three years. Yeah. You're gonna get your last sandwich before they pack I will up do, and yeah. drink. Thanks a lot. No mate. problem. See you later. They've just given me a quilt, so I've got something yeah. warm to wrap myself up in tonight. Will that make a big difference? It will make a hell of a lot of difference. Yeah, it means I'm not going to freeze my knackers off tonight. We can gain information about their activities. They'll they'll give us information about all the people who, who are committing crime. If we're talking about the, the homeless population and the beggars, they're, they're certainly victims as well. And by understanding the, the issues that affect them, we're able to deal more effectively with the problems that face the community. We met uh, a couple of weeks ago, didn't we, Colly? Yeah, we did. More when uh, yeah, well, we, you had a bit, a bit too much to drink and uh, uh, a bit inebriated. Yes, uh, if you'd like to put it, uh, put it the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm not reiterating myself too much, but I, I just love how it's more rather than like, oh, you're a you're a police officer. It is your job, robot like robotically. You see something illegal, you look at the law, take him in, do this, that. Where it, here it's like, yeah, if people are being violent against others, take them in, but just be more conscious about how to help someone rather than just put the law out there. I'm not exactly sure what the law is. I don't want to say it too much. Last thing before I start. Especially for people in, in these situations, like what he said, like if he didn't have a flat to stay in, he'd, he'd be on the end of a rope. Um, uh, or or not, not, not even to that extreme, to, it's someone else who just like, they'd be on the streets. I, I've had... Before I get into like, I, I think that I would be, if not for structures I have and support of, you know, I'll, t- I'll talk to you, but I'll, I'll get into it later. I'm sorry. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, we were. So well, you were out last Tuesday, weren't you? We came to fetch it early because yeah. Arsenal game. We got it yeah. sorted. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, you, you want you're yeah. a big fella that come in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He could get his head through the door. He <laughs> couldn't get his head through the door. It was that small. So what are you up in court for? Drunken disorderly. Disorderly. And um, shoplifting. Theft. Theft. He, he, he did try and pinch um, a, bottle uh, a bottle of port. But that's because of his condition. He, he likes to drink, does Colin. What do you normally drink, Colin? Anything. <laughs> <laughs> How useful is it to have these kind of soup kitchens? These places are godsend because exactly. if it were if it were for people like this, we'd have nothing. Is this the first meal you've had today? Yes, it is. First meal is having three days. We eat our skips at about four o'clock in the morning. We eat, we eat old sandwiches and stuff like that. Of course we do. We, we eat stale bread, we, we eat everything. We go to Neto's though, don't we? For a shopping. We don't go to Neto's when we get paid. But at the end of the day, I'm a survivor. Look, look, look at this. Look, I've, I've, got, I've got a king size duvet to eat of a Christian, God fearing people. The officers then see a young man matching the description of the wanted street yeah, robber. That's fine, we're not going to stop you doing anything. Sorry to be a pain. We didn't know you were coming, but obviously you've, now you've come, we, we can't yeah, just Sam. ignore it. Sam. Are you still on, still on heroin? No, I'm on uh, methadone. You're on methadone, aren't you, Dave, Tony? Uh, 70 mil a day. Roger, could you. I just want to say, just, I don't care, fast forward if you want. But I have so much sympathy. Empathy, whatever, is that I know that, like, if. If I, I I grew up in a relatively well well off family, relatively well off, um, I had great parents. They were you know 
uh, they never divorced, still together today. I, they're still supportive. And I, I never got great grades. I had mental problems throughout my... I still deal with some, but not as bad. My late teens, early 20s, mid-20s. Um, and if I didn't have that support and, like, sending me to psychiatrists, therapists, and getting me on certain medication... I think I would be right out here. I think there is a good chance I could be doing, I, I could become that easily. And so, um, Still on no. just very much addiction and stuff like that. And it's on, man, let's go. no joke and some, something has to be done. You've called me, we can't yeah, just ignore Sam. it. Sam. He's still on, he's still on early. No, I'm on net, let's go. You're not method on arm today, Tony. Uh, 17 a day. Roger, could you print him out, please, and then just tell me about uh, any tattoos that we can see? Just show us that one on your right forearm, Tony. And you can't really see it, so I'll show you. I mean, I'll show you both, like, but you can't really see it. No, it said mum. It did say mum. Lovely, thank you. Right, thank you. The, the reason we <laughs> check, your, check you out, Anthony, is there's someone doing robberies. You've come and you match the description. We've just both said that. Right. But we've got a name for him, and we know it's not you now. Right. So you, you, you're not no, even I'll in the frame. You, yeah, I'll tell you Guys, right, so I, I, if you saw me kind of, like, recoil there, it's because... Shows you how freaking American, but when he. Love the thing. I'll show you. Just show us that one on your right forearm, Tony. And you can't really see it, so I'll show you. I mean, I'll show you both like this. Like right there, like I'm just like, oh my god, like they're gonna. And then I realize, well, they don't have guns nearly as much here, and the police don't have guns. I was expecting them to be like, don't open it, don't, don't. Sorry, I hit it. Don't open it, what are you doing? <laughs> And, and that can't be Jesus Christ. Like, oh yeah, they don't have the gun problems. No, it said mum. It did say mum. Love the thing. Right, hello. The, the reason we <laughs> check, check you out, Anthony, is there's someone doing robberies. You've come and you match the description. We've just both said that. Right. But we've got a name for him, and we know it's not you now. Right. So you, you, you're not well, even I'll in the frame. You, yeah, I'll tell you so. Shalesmore lies on the edge of the city. Made up of high-rise flats and industrial buildings, it's Sheffield's unofficial red light district. Over 200 women are known to be working these streets. A lot of the residents are subjected to uh, abuse. In worst cases, they're uh, even subjected to assault, uh, sometimes violent assault. Many of the prostitutes use drugs uh, and there are signs of that everywhere, including needles left lying about. We found that 80% or even more of the women we actually deal with are addicted to either heroin or crack cocaine. And therefore, to feed that addiction, they go into the streets to, to earn the cash to pay for their next fix. And it's, it's a vicious cycle, which the majority of these women find it very difficult to get out of. PC Wortley joins community officer Jeremy Spencer on a night sweep of the area in an unmarked vehicle. I can spend all day driving around in a police car, moving people on, but an hour later, those people will be back. So sometimes it needs myself, my colleagues, to go out arrest them, get them to court, get, you know, bail conditions so they can't come in this area to relieve a community for, for short periods of time. We're hoping to be using uh, the antisocial behavioural uh, orders on the prostitutes. We're going to be using those powers in conjunction with uh, help for the girls because the roots of their problems is drug addiction. But the ones who refuse to take the help will have to be dealt with more sternly. And if they just keep committing the offence, then they'll be arrested and we'll be applying for antisocial behaviour orders. There's a pickup just going on ahead of us, so we're going to deal with that. Yeah. Pickup? Delta 36. I'd like this vehicle stopping, please. Oh, I thought he meant a pickup truck. None ahead of us. But like a drug pickup. So we're going to deal with that. Yeah. Delta 36. I'd like this vehicle stopping, please. I'm in an unmarked vehicle. Stay there a minute, love. 
You've uh, been seen around the red light area tonight, driving around earlier. Would it come as a surprise to you that she's a prostitute? What had you discussed, negotiated? Um, sex for a tenner. Sex for a tenner? Oh, Lord. Pardon? Low job for a tenner. No job for a tenner. Right. Must tell you at this stage, question something which will let you on in court. Whom you lost in trouble. Hold on a second. Sex for a tenner. Oh, Lord. Pardon? No job for a tenner. No job for a tenner. Right. Must tell you at this stage that uh, I'm arresting you uh, for curb crawling. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. If you do not mention when question something. It may harm your defence if you do not answer his questions. And also, any questions you do answer will be in court, will be... That's, like, the opposite. <laughs> that, like, y y we, we have the, like, plead the fifth, which is, like, you comply with everything, you know? You comply, but you just stay silent and, and just say, I plead the fifth, I want a lawyer. You can just plead silent and nothing is held against you. Um, but if you say stuff, then it, then it will be. But you guys have it. If you don't answer, that can be held against you. I think it should let you only court. Am I getting that right? in trouble. Um, a while ago. Just come and see him, police car, a minute, Leo. Mm -hmm. It's clear that the two don't know each other, uh, and we suspect that he's been curb crawling and she's been soliciting for prostitution. They'll both go to the charge office uh, where they'll be uh, dealt with for the offence. This lady will be charged and uh, this male may be eligible for a caution. But that's all dependent upon his previous convictions and whether he's uh, in a position to uh, confess to the offence. If he denies the offence, we'll simply charge him and send him to court. There are powers that we can use. Uh, now to get the court to disqualify curb crawlers from driving. Um, if that's the case, we'll apply for it. Would you like to be with the solicitor this moment in time? No. Well, what time do you have them at the door? Uh, this morning. So the person soliciting, uh, like, the, so the prostitute person so, it is, is charged more than the person receiving their service, just like a like a drug dealer selling, the person selling is going to get charged more than the person buying. Like, same concept. What's going to happen now is there's been arrested so for people who admitted that the young lady up um, negotiated a price for a sexual act, uh, which obviously completes the offence of curb crawling. He's been arrested, uh, be booked in, and uh, uh, be checked on our computer, depending on what his background is. He'll be given uh, an interview and. Uh, if the custody sergeant is willing, he may receive a verbal caution if he's got no previous convictions at all. The man receives a verbal warning, whilst the prostitute is later fined £40. It's night time in Sheffield's red light district, and there's no shortage of women working the streets offering... Did she keep the tenor? So it's really just a $30 fine? Their bodies from Sheffield's red light district, and there's no shortage of women working the streets offering yeah, their bodies for as little as £10. The prostitutes uh, will stand in the red light area. Um, they'll, they'll obviously stand by the road because the majority of their custom is uh, males in motor vehicles. Um, they'll stand at specific points and junctions where vehicles can turn off and stop. Down at the bottom there, there's a, there's a young lady stood alone. Uh, it's, it's now quarter past ten at night. Uh, it's not a bus route, it's not a bus stop there. Um, she's shouting down the road to another female who's uh, stood a bit further down the road. Being a prostitute, a female prostitute, must be like the most i'm not talking about like if like uh, it's got to be like one of the most dangerous jobs there is because like if you are i know a lot of murders come from men like going to see prostitute and and then um you know and, and like it's so because one you're you're a, a woman picked up by a guy both of you are doing illegal things you're not supposed to be caught and if you go missing, it's likely if you're a prostitute, then um, am I, if I'm making a bunch of weird, uh, just take me in good faith here, like a, 
then then like if you go missing then it's likely that you weren't really like known by like a lot of people where you were before then and then it's got to be one of the most dangerous jobs she's shouting down the road to another female who's uh, stood a bit further down the road it doesn't appear to me that uh, they're having the normal sort of conversation that two people would because you'd come together and talk to one another she's looking at passing vehicles the lone male drivers in them are uh, sort of giving us the uh, grounds to suspect that she's loitering for prostitution at the moment. Why is it legal in Liverpool to do it in one place? A lot of creepy it's guys not legal. out there. Okay. No, right, I'm arresting you for loitering for the purposes of prostitution. You do not have to say anything, but it may arm your defence if you do not mention when questioned, saying which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. I want to see a doctor. Do you yeah, you can see a doctor. I'm yeah, Come see him, please, Carl. She's going to the charge office. What for? For loitering. For loitering? Oh. Hey, well, get me for loitering, too. Hey? Well, take me for loitering, too. You're not loitering, are you? Well, well hang on. What? Hang on what? Do you, do you speak English, I'll do speak, you? I speak perfectly good English. Right then, well, what the fuck? Loitering Stop swearing and she'll be arrested. All right, then, well, arrest me. Go hey? on, arrest me. I'm arrest not you, Arrest you Go for on. what? For whatever you want to, what you've done here for. Do me for the same. You're not loitering. I'm not loitering. No. All right, then, well, I'll stand here on the corner now, shall I? Right, then. So much doesn't make sense here. If she was a prostitute, if she is indeed a prostitute, then why would she be hanging out with a, like, with a friend who's a guy, a friend? And if he is, like, the pimp, why would he also want to get arrested? And if it's her boyfriend, then why would he want her selling? I'm so confused here. And you'll yeah. get a caution because you're not a common prostitute. Right, well, I will be then. Hang on. No, fuck off. Oh. You've been arrested for what? Oi, I told you to She's stop. A common... I told you, you to told stop. You told me right, to listen. stop fucking I told up. you to stop swearing. You've continued. Yeah. Right. I'm now arresting you under Section 5 of the Public Order yeah. Act. Do you understand? Yeah. Well, that's what he wanted. Win win. Shut Leave up. Leave him with the cat. Don't tell us to shut up. Hey, don't tell us to shut up. Uh, shut Come up was on. a bit aggressive. Stop, stop twisting, will ya? Who's coming this way? Jump in. Wanker. There you go. All right, you cockney prick. Very good. Is Sheffield near uh, uh, um, a cockney area? Sorry, I had, I had a pee. I washed my hands. All right, you cockney prick. Very good. And at the moment, um, the female is being booked in by the custody sergeant. It will probably be that, uh, given her antecedent history, um, she will be charged and either bail for court or get for court in the morning. But that depends on, on her antecedent history and it also depends on how she is with the custody staff as well today. Uh, and what we do with this, this chap also depends on his previous history. Uh, such things as whether he's got um, criminal record for similar offences. The boyfriend gets a 12-month conditional discharge for disorderly behaviour. The girl is fined £40, but within days, she's back working the streets. A key... So, sorry, I scat... Uh, uh, uh. The boyfriend gets a 12-month conditional discharge. 12-month conditional discharge? So he's not being... He's not going to jail, but... Isn't that kind of like probation? So a 12 month conditional discharge for disorderly behavior. So it, it means like, does that mean like if he gets involved with anything like this again for 12 months, he, he has a harsher penalty? The girl is fined 40 pounds, but within Freaking days, neck. she's back working the streets. A key part of what we're trying to achieve is being visible to the public build up relationships with the different communities within the Sheffield city centre area. And by building up those relationships, they, they can build up uh, knowledge of the different problems facing the community. Current issues include prostitution, begging, street drinking, and uh, street crime. 
unless we're out there actually speaking to the public, we're not going to be aware of what their issues are. Back out on City Patrol, PC Wortley has joined colleague Jim Mumby. What have you been up to anyway? I've oh, cool, begging. You've you been begging? Yeah. I have early on, Lord. Yeah, you had your drugs today? Yeah. How much on a day? Two or three bags of ammo. Two or three bags, yeah, 30 quid. Coming down. Yeah, is that just to keep yourself going or, yeah, or, or, or is it to get you it's high? Off. Just to keep your rattle off. Fight, I'm gonna mess with. How much are you earning a week from begging? Enough to feed me, I'm going to feed myself. Uh, so, yeah. so you're trying for 30 quid a day then, aren't you? Nah, not even that. 25 quid a day. 25 yeah. quid a day, no problem. But like I say, it's over there, all shop with lads in here the yeah. other day, so at the end of the day, you, you know as well as I know, I've got mm. an habit to feed boys. Mm. What would the wife me do? Can you ask him for a spare change? Or oh, go it, home after they've been shopping and find yeah. out he's been burgled by me, do you know what I mean? Right, chaps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll see you in week, John. They currently say that they're on approach. God damn it. That's, that is the, that encapsulates what I so much love. Dealing with nonviolent criminals. There's no, I think a lot of, additional conflict with cops like in the u.s are kind of you know more eager to i don't want to say every cop i know there are good people in any every profession but like uh, the, being a police officer especially when you get that uniform on you got that gun uh, the, like there's no way it's that you're not going to have this like like ready to like like intimidate or whatever like like at the end of the day you're two citizens when a cop pulls over someone it's not this like a uh, like like uh, um master servant relationship where you like do everything cooperate you should cooperate yeah i'm sure it can be a horrible job but just seeing interactions like this where it doesn't feel like they're demeaning they're just genuinely worried and like hey how are you guys doing what drugs have you had? Um, uh, uh, you, you sh oh, you're doing this over here? Uh, uh, enough to feed yourself here? All right, you know, I hope you're doing well. It, it, it just seems like s what a town and a community should be. No superiority complexes between professions because of a uniform and gun you have on. Or, um... um the, the problem is, is that, like, you couldn't transition cops from in the US from no gun to from gun to no gun like that because then the you they you guys don't have the, like the gun prolific problem I don't want to get into that but just this is just just feels right it's like a person going around looking after for people approximately 30 to 40 pounds a day, uh, unfortunately, uh, with the habit you normally have to double what they say and it could be anything up to 60 pounds onwards that they've got to earn, obviously per day, to try and keep the habit. As John's already explained to us, it's not about keeping the habit, it's about keeping him going and he needs 60 pounds a day to inject to keep going just to do the basic functions. The officers are still looking for a man wanted for street robbery. They head to this disused factory that's home to rough sleepers. It's just here. It's, they're all derelict, and as I say, we've been in this afternoon and we've had a look round, and it's in a very sad state of repair. Unfortunately, it's the same story in every room with needles. And It's a place where we know that uh, people are sleeping rough. Uh, as you can see, there's a needle there, half a pull cue, tomatoes, obviously someone's not keen on tomatoes. We've got condoms, we've got needles, we've got milk where someone's obviously uh, been living. Police! We've currently got two people sleeping in this room here. They're not here at the moment, but as you can see, the bedding's down. Uh, there's needles, there's lighters. The hygiene is absolutely awful, uh, as you can see, the floor's dirty. In here, they've been trying to light fires, uh, presumably just to keep warm. You couldn't actually uh, sit down or lay down here without having a, a severe risk of uh, having pin pricks or needle uh, needle pricks, or uh, you know there will be human excrement and uh, and the like. But it is uh, substantially warmer than than actually being on the street or or in a doorway.
This is probably worse than the last room, to be honest. It did start off as a, a lady's uh, toilet for the for the factory, but you can see now from the floor. We've got needles. Masses and masses of needles. Empty methadone bottle. I think this is bordering on not being quite as good as the open streets, to be honest. I think you'd have to be a, a 10 out of 10 desperate to... I mean, I feel pretty uncomfortable just standing here. Uh, I don't think I would uh, sit or lay anywhere in this building. As they're leaving, the officers see a man who's been living in the building. It's your, it's your kit in there, isn't it? Sleeping bag. Yeah. yeah. So how long have you been living there? About a month. About a month, what's it like? Cold. Are you surviving then? Are you getting your money? Yeah, I've been big issues and stuff. You got your badge? Yeah. How much uh, heroin you on a day? Yeah, it's up to well, uh, approximately. About a tenner. About a tenner, not double. <laughs> See, they're like, uh, there's a big difference between like going in there and seeing all the squalor, and um, oh, heroin needles, and um, oh, he's trying to light a fire inside. There's one aspect you can go if you're just like a robotic cop, of like. There's open needles right there. Drug use. Oh, my God. This is considered arson. Oh, my God. Building code. Do you own this place? Or do you live here? Yeah. Oh, booking you for arson, attempted arson, drug use. Get in there. Rather than like a, a like, instead of looking at the crimes, being like looking at the squalor of how this person's living and then seeing them and being like, you live here? Yeah. It's like, how are you doing? What, what's can we help you in some way? I'm not, I don't want to come across like I'm nailing every cop on the planet or in the U.S., but I think there are a lot of people that have one of those two modes. And to see the compassionate side, not the, you know. <laughs> Is there anyone else stopping with you way in there? There's a few people there. How many, roughly? About three, three more people there. But all sleeping in the same room, or you, you've got, you've room, got room, different di apartments? Di different, different parts of the building. Is it like a bit of a family then, a community? Well, we, yeah, we have quite for each other, talk to each other. Anyone giving you any hassle there or anything? No. No? Get get to meet the working girls, they say hello or... A, a woman come in with this bloke and it's yeah. like open the door to come into the room. Yeah. And you see me, no lady sleeping back yeah. and you said sorry and like turned around and went back So out. they haven't bothered so you? So I thought, like, she must be a prostitute, but I'm not... Not I sure. I weren't sure, but I didn't know her, you know. Heading back into the city centre, the officers get a call on the radio. Negative, mate. It's just some uh, street drinkers falling all over the floor. Roger, we'll have a look. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. We've had a report that uh, there's potentially a beggar on the uh, near the tequila bar and uh, that was a bit unsteady on his feet, so we'd like to go and have a look at him and just assess what's uh, occurring. There you go. How are you? Guys. Right. How much you had to drink today, Sean? Yeah, You've just had a few. Yeah. Are you a street drinker? Do you sleep on the streets or have you got a house to go to? I can't just do Number 11. Will you come to this church with me? Are you going to go and get some food? Yeah. We've got to we go, go into the church. To the... We we're going to miss it. All right then. Wow. Two seconds. We'll get him up and he'll be going. Yeah. Do you think you'll be able get to look him after him? Yeah. Because we're going to help you up in a minute and you're going to go along and get something to eat, aren't you? So you can't stop here. How long you been with Sean, then? I've known him for about 11 years. About 11 years? Stop four five. Uh, nothing current or impending. Total of 41 previous. Uh, most recently for... for B&D. Uh, April 2003, ever. Come on, then. You're going to have to get up, Sean. Oh, so... Are you going to go and get something to eat? Let's see if you can pass the walking test. See you later. Go on, Sean, follow her. Go on, then. You don't want to get arrested. Go and get something to eat. He was trying to hang on to walk with. These people in the main are victims, uh, people who have issues in everyday life who have addictions, who have mental health issues. And the life on the streets is 
is the deprived existence where they're simply existing from day to day, trying to feed the, the, the habit if they have a habit. Therefore, it's certainly a priority of South Yorkshire Police to help and support these people wherever necessary. Uh, that was an amazing video. Um, I mean, not seeing not amazing stuff, but I loved seeing the contrast and how in how British police deal with nonviolent criminals. Um, being a police officer, it's got to—I I, know—it's got to be a difficult job. Okay, it, you know, you have to interact with some of the people who are having. You know, mentally, it's got to take a toll, but also, I, I, the, the gun thing is what I'm, is so difficult for me. It's like, clearly guns kind of, you know, like the Stanford prison experiment or, you know, they gave college kids like, uh, like randomly picked like, like six to be, uh, prison guards, six to be prisoners and just the way people feel when they put on, like, some thing that shows authority. And then when you have a gun and, and he, 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 you're, you're not as, you're more detached from the community. Uh, and, and then it gives you this kind of subconscious, just like, yeah, listen to me. But the, the thing is, like, I don't know how you transition to that in the USA. Um, because you can't ask, you know and ask you, the U.S. police to go out um, into places without a gun when we're so, when we're so just, I mean, the, 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 the one of the examples is perfect. Like the way I was like, whoa, when the guy took his jacket off, he's like, I don't know the answers, guys. I don't know. But a very interesting video. Love all you guys. All right. Um, I appreciate any answers to any questions I had. Sorry if I talk too much. And I'll I'll see I hope you like and subscribe uh up to you and um I'll see you guys hopefully next time. Bye guys.